and welcome to Media 7. I'm Jose Barbosa filling in this week for Russell Brown. On the show we'll be asking if the academic pursuit called Women's Studies has made a difference to our media and culture. Does it still need to be taught in our universities or has the country's consciousness been sufficiently elevated? But first let's see what Sam Mulgrew can find in the source. Facebook, by far the most used social medium on the web and now a three-time BAFTA winner, sort of, thanks to the movie The Social Network. The site's been reported to be worth 50 billion US dollars, about the GDP of Croatia. Almost 7% of web traffic in US offices is through Facebook, the most of any website. The result? 54% of US companies ban social networking at work which resulted in more than 50% of workers finding ingenious ways to get around that firewall. Christmas came early for Freeview. December saw their highest sales figures ever. Almost 35,000 New Zealand Freeview sets sold in December. Not how you might think though. In 2010's fourth quarter, over 85% of Freeview sets sold came built in in new TVs. They're selling so well, in fact, they're catching up with Sky. And our topic du jour, women in journalism. The media mightn't be quite as equal as you'd like. Although they make up more than half the journalistic workforce, women as a group earn much less than men. Though, as the big New Zealand journalism survey points out, it could be because men have a better grip on the greasy pole. Of the six main dailies, only one, the Dominion Post, is guided by a woman's touch. The other five have male editors. Sam Mulgrew, elbow deep in numbers there. Women's studies as a university subject has been part of the New Zealand education system since the 70s. The aim of such a course is to teach its students about gender inequalities, as well as analysing the different experiences of men and women, among other areas of research. However, this month Victoria University will disestablish its Gender and Women's Studies program, one of the longest running in the country. So does this mean Women's Studies is no longer relevant? And what has been its impact on our media? Joining me to discuss this is journalist Deborah Connington, Hannah Lynch, a Women's Studies graduate and journalist in training, and political commentator Chris Trotter. Deborah, I'll, I'll come to you first. Um, in 1990 you wrote a fairly provocative and pointed article about the Women's Studies Programme at Waikato uh, University. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to remember a, a, an oh, article you wrote good. 20 years ago. <laughs> but I'm just curious to know if your stance is soft, and uh, if I quote directly from it, uh, it wasn't correcting imbalances but rewriting history. Uh, has your stance softened at all? Has my stance softened? Well, I think in a way it's probably sad that the course in, in Wellington is closing down if people are still clamouring to go to it. I understand that not many people are and maybe that the that they aren't it's not needed anymore but if you look at that clip that we just saw that only looked at women in dailies if you look at magazines throughout New Zealand we've had some very very strong women editing magazines in New Zealand if you look at Robin Langwell Virginia Larson to name just two and if the the point of uh, women's studies courses is to make women strong and tough and hold their own against men in the media, uh, I would say that, that maybe women's studies courses aren't needed. But, you know, I'm ambivalent about it. I, I'm, I don't hold strong views now whether they should be held in university or not. I'm for knowledge for knowledge's sake. I don't believe that universities' courses are just there to get a job. I'm not one of those people, no. Uh, you started out as a journalist uh, just before women and uh, gender studies appeared in our universities. Did you notice any change in, in consciousness, I guess, um, as the years sort of wore on working in journalism? No, I didn't look to women's studies for my inspiration at all. I looked to activists in, journalists, in journalism, mainly overseas, people like Gloria Steinem, a feminist activist who was the founding editor and a journalist in Ms Magazine in the States, uh, Mother Jones, a woman called Deirdre English. Uh, they were actually from the left, not from the right. Um, women like that, Joan Didion, another writer, 
uh, they were my inspiration, so not, not, a, yeah. not academics. Plenty of inspiration there. Mm. Hannah, I'm wondering what your assessment is of the modern women's studies class or courses. Um, I think that it's quite different to the way it's perceived, you, you know, much like Deborah spoke about. I think that I really enjoyed it at Auckland, but I enjoyed it because it was small and because it was kind of a little bit quirky and all over the place. That suited me. But with 21 people enrolled in the course last year at Victoria and I think seven for 2011, I can totally see why they've decided to shut it down. And I know that Auckland's had similar conversations about it with their students. I mean, at one point they didn't know how many people were enrolled in the course when I went to the department head, which I mean, to be a stage three student at a university, to go to someone for advice and them not to really know that you're enrolled in the course is kind of a little bit overwhelming and disappointing. Uh, it's all informal there. Yeah, anyway. it's all informal yeah. anyway at Auckland. But uh, I mean, I know Auckland's talking about shifting to gender studies, and I personally was quite disappointed that I will graduate with a women's studies degree, not a gender studies degree, because I think you know, being a modern woman and going out into the workforce and obviously I want to go into journalism, I think it would be much more beneficial for me and people would have a, you know, a softer understanding perhaps if I had gender studies behind my name, not women's studies. Mm. Uh, Chris, the women's studies uh, programme at Wellington, as, as we've established, has, has been disestablished. I think Canterbury University lost mm -hmm. its course last year. Uh, I was reading a sort of uh, a figure that said 50 major restructurings were, happened last year in tertiary education. Can we infer anything from all this? Well, I think women's studies is the victim of a number of things. Uh, they've been caught in a classic pincer movement. On the one hand, you've got... Um, declining budgets uh, in New Zealand universities, so that's a pressure. Uh, on the other hand, you've got um, our, our business first uh, culture, uh, which has very little sympathy uh, for uh, courses like women's studies. They're not seen as vocational. In fact, they're seen as relics of uh, a different era. They're, they're seen as left wing. They're seen as, as challenging. Uh, to what is now a very orthodox uh, and widely accepted uh, view of uh, how society should be run. Um, but also I think what we're seeing here is uh, you know, yet another victim of the backlash. Uh, I think there's been a backlash building in New Zealand since about 2004, 2005. Um, it really um, got rolling after uh, Labour, against all the odds, won the 2005 election. 2008, they finally got rid of Helen Clark and her cabal. Uh, and really, since then, there's been a kind of tacit uh, support for the movement against political correctness gone mad, uh, which you know reached a crescendo in 2008, but has you know been uh, pushing along steadily. Uh, so I think. Uh, there's, there's those two things, business, vocational courses are now, you know, de rigueur in universities, you know, there's not an, enough money to go around so women's studies gets the chop, but also there's that, you know, the blokes are back in charge and these Sheilas can just take a hike. <laughs> uh, time for a break now, but when we return we'll meet a former women's studies student now on our TV screens every night.